All right, so welcome back. Here we are inside of the hotel room. Now, before I go any further, if you find any value in today's video, please smash that like button so we can help get this video into the algorithm of YouTube and out into the world to the people who may be looking for stuff like this. Also, I want to know if you guys have ever been to the paint mines or any rock formation system like it. Now, with the photos today, what I'm going to do is kind of just walk you through them and see and explain what I was thinking, one, when I was photographing, and then two, what I was thinking as I was calling through the images and uh, how I wanted to edit the image. Now, if there's any one image that you want to see me edit, then just leave it in the comment section below and I will be more than happy to make a video showing you how I use those tools. But today it's going to be mostly philosophy so you can go back and recreate a lot of what I'm doing. So let's dive into the computer. So the first image here is a picture. It's a panorama. It's actually 11 images stitched together. Now I'm not going to open it on my computer because this image, it takes a lot to uh, put together. All right. And it takes a lot of computing power. I don't want to burn the computing power inside of my computer uh, because I'm also screen recording at the same time. But just know that this is a huge image. If you just take a look here, it's almost 600 megabytes, right? This is half of a gigabyte of an image or a file. Um, it, it's, it's massive considering the fact that most of the images that I produce are typically in the ballpark of about 25 to 40 megapixels. All right. So I'm not going to open it, but I did make some edits here and I just kind of wanted to throw the panorama out there. Uh, I took 11 images and you're wondering like, how did I take these 11 images? Well, what I did was I cut them uh, I took them in portrait mode or portrait orientation. So turn the camera so the frame is vertical uh, going up and down. And there's 11 images literally cut starting from this end all the way over to this end. That's how I prefer to take my landscape images. Uh, I probably could have gotten this in three or four images if I had done this horizontal. Uh, but I don't think I would have gotten as much of the foreground as I did. So I am happy with the way that this turned out, but I'm going to have to wait until I get back to the house to really edit this photo further. So let's go back to the browse mode. All right. So here we are on the next photo. Now, for whatever reason, I guess I deleted the settings or the edits that I made to this photo. So I'm just going to go ahead and re-edit it the way that I was expecting the image to be. Uh, so the very first thing that I'm going to do is click on on one landscape. This gives me a really contrasty image. All right. Now this is a raw photo. If you're shooting a JPEG, you're not going to see the camera profile options available to you. Then I'm just going to go ahead and hit AI match because I want to get the settings that I had in the camera. Now I know for a fact that these are not the settings that I had in the camera. So I'm going to pull the contrast back up and I'm going to bring the highlights back down the shadows. They don't need to be down there because I'm going to pull the blacks down in this direction. And the, the photo is getting back to what I originally captured the image as. Um, and in fact, I think I need it to bring this down just a little bit more. And then I'll even pull the shadows down a little bit more. What I'm going for is just a really moody, uh, dramatic contrast looking uh, image in this in this rock. Uh, and the midtones is where I really want to get my brightness from. I'm going to hold down the J key. Yeah, I'm okay with where that is right now. Um, and then I got to pull the saturation all the way down. One of the things shooting the camera profile with the EOS R, sometimes on one doesn't actually remove all of the saturation when it makes the photo. But this is essentially all that I needed to do in this portion of the image. Now, what I want to do is hit local and I am going to go ahead and open up 
I'm gonna open up underneath this rock face here, okay? So now I did this originally with my Wacom uh, tablet, so I'm using my finger and the trackpad, uh, but we're gonna make do, we're gonna make do. Now, if you ever get a Wacom tablet, it really does change the way that you edit. Uh, you know, it, it just feels a little bit more natural, but it's okay. And then I think we'll boost the shadows just a touch on this. The goal here is just to bring more of that detail back in. So if I hit the off, you can see that I'm just brightening the image, all right? This is what we call dodging. If you're not familiar with that term, this is how you dodge an image. Now, I also wanted to bring back some detail in, in this area. Uh, and all that does is it allows us to get a more, um, a, a better perspective of this rock in general. All right. Uh, now, the last thing that I did to finish off the photo, because you can see that this was a really quick edit, which is why I didn't have an issue with redoing it. Um, I'm going to add a vignette, like so. I'm going to click on Big Softy. Keeping it simple, guys. Keeping it simple. And I'm going to bring the size right down just a little bit there. And then what I like to do is fade the opacity. I don't need a crazy large vignette, right? I just want something that helps center the focus onto this rock. It's black and white. There's going to be these nice gradients. And then the last thing that I want to do uh, is something that's also very simple, which is I'm just going to throw in a border. So that way, uh, now... I could leave it here, but I actually like to scale my borders down. I don't like the, the big, thick, chunky borders. Uh, I like them to be a little bit more slim. To me, that just works better. Uh, so there is the photo re-edited, all right? And I talked you through the steps that I took. Uh, and, and I can always revisit that and, and make different edits. Now, the next photo... I'm not going to open this one either, uh, but I did this exact same concept of developing the image inside of the develop module, and then I just threw on a, uh, a quick little border, all right? Now, what I will talk about with this image, because I think that there's some value in talking about it, is the composition. So if you look at this image and this shadow, it's kind of cutting down in if you want to uh, if we were going diagonal thirds it's cutting a third diagonally right uh, into the image so that makes for an interesting uh, uh, it makes the photo a little bit more interesting now what was cool is you see that and then you go to this next boulder or this larger rock uh, looking thing and then that leads you into the subject of the photo, which is this rock that you can tell the sun is, uh, it's halfway in the sun and the other half is in shadow. So there's something interesting there as well. And then it leads to the top of the frame, which is this nice uh, diagonal line, uh, which that's just the way that the, uh, not the horizon, but the hill that this rock face was sitting under uh, leads into and then there's the top of the sky uh, and then there's this other rock face here as well now mind you I was using an 85 millimeter lens and that's how I was able to really focus in on this particular feature one of the cool things about uh, just photography in general is you could take what you would normally do with a portrait and bring that into landscape photography so the subject was this rock face, and I wanted to add more of its element to tell the story. 
Uh, even though it's an 85 millimeter lens, I was able to get more of the environment into it to really tell the story of this rock face. So you have some context that uh, of where this rock is sitting. Now, I don't talk too much on the channel about uh, you know capturing the image, but if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know because when you're out on your photo walks, you know I can absolutely offer up some uh, tips and uh, just different ways of looking at things. But the last note that I want to make about this, this is an image all about the light. Uh, and, you know, obviously the subject is this rock face, but this rock face would not be very interesting if there weren't these shadows, right? There's shadows all over the image and your eye just follows the light trail that leads into this rock face and then there's the shadow side of the rock face. It's really, really important to pay attention to the light in any photo that you take. I know that if you've been doing photography for a while, you have probably heard that a lot, but the truth is you definitely want to make sure that you're paying attention to the light. So let's go on to the next photo. Now, this is a fun photo and I will open it and hopefully I do not mess up my settings that I have applied to the photo. Now, I originally shot this photo in black and white and when it loads, I'll show you the layers. Uh, so here it is in black and white. Once it opens up, there it is. So the black and white image, I really, I, I really like both of them, all right? The black and white image, it's clean, it's crisp, there's all this weird looking texture. You can tell that it's a cactus, but it's, you know, it takes you a while and you want to dissect the photo a little bit more. Now, in color, you can instantly tell that it's a cactus, but you start to see the color, the, the time of day, the direction of light, the tone of the light, the warmth of the light how it really plays with the colors in the entire frame. All I did was change the camera profile to portrait. That allows me to open up the shadows inside of the image, all right? It's important to be able to open your shadows, I think at least, uh, when you're trying to show depth, especially when you have such a short, uh, shallow depth of field. Uh, I was using the 85 millimeter again on the EOS R, um, and this one is, or I'm at F8, but I'm pretty close. All right. So that doesn't really mean much. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into that if, again. If you're interested in learning more about photography, uh, philosophy and things of that sort, just let me know. Uh, but here's what I'll, I will say. The tone and color. I just made some develop some basic develop settings uh, and then I increased the vibrance quite a bit, but I pulled down the saturation and that was really just to like give the give a certain aesthetic. Right. Uh, but where this photo really came together is not with dynamic contrast, but with this color pop or this color adjustment. Uh, this is with the color adjustment off does not look very good. But as soon as I hit the button and I turn the color adjustment on, the, the greens really stand out. They're really muted right now. And then when I turn this on, the greens really start to pop. They stand out. The reds are a little bit more vibrant. The yellows, the oranges, all of those colors. That's all I did with the color adjustment. And literally, that's all I did with this image. Now I'm going to hit cancel and say that that's okay. Because I'm not going to make any adjustments to that. Um, now... We're going to look at one more image and this image here. Yeah, I'll open this one because uh, this one definitely uh, twofold. All right. Here's the first fold. When I was walking around, I came across a mountain and you can see uh, or not a mountain, but an opening in one of the rocks. Uh, where there's these bushes that are growing. And then right beyond it is the rest of these, uh, these paint mines or these rock formations. And then it goes all the way into this hilltop that leads into the sun. 
and you can see the effect that the sun has on the entire area. Except for, this is how the photo looked when I originally took it. And I was intentionally taking this photo because I knew that I was going to enhance it in RAW. You could barely see the sun, the, the paint mines don't look anywhere near as vibrant as they do in the final image. Uh, this is really bright down here. Like the photo looks drastically different. So let's take a look at uh, what went into making this particular image. Uh, first thing is changing the color profile or the camera profile, I'm sorry, uh, to landscape. And with that, I also wanted to, uh, I hit AI match so I can get the settings that I had in the camera because it's not that this is a bad image, right? Um, it's very flat and that's just how raw images are. But I wanted to get the settings that I had in the camera and then modify those. And so that's why I hit AI match. And then I went ahead and boost the, the vibrance. Um, and I messed around with the blacks, the whites here to get the image the way that I wanted it to look base settings. Uh, so in fact, let me show you what it looks like this is what the image looked like after I got done with all of the base settings. All right, started to get the sun back a little bit here, or I'm sorry, no, that's in the local tab. I have an adjustment there. Um, but you can see here, let me just do this. Wish there was a way that I can turn off all of these adjustments without having to go through each of the tabs. All right. So this is what the photo looks like with all of the develop settings. All right. None of the effects are on just the develop settings. That's all you're seeing right now. And that's where I started with this image. Uh, and then I just started to build. All right. First, I wanted to put in some contrast. And I'm actually going to walk you guys through this one a little bit uh, because I think it's important. So first I wanted to throw in some contrast, all right? Got the contrast in there and really, really crunch it up a little bit. Then I wanted to enhance the sunshine uh, and warm up the image a little bit, changes the color uh, palette just a bit. Um, and then I wanted to go into the color enhancer. And this one here is just enhancing um, the white balance a little bit. It's nothing significant. In fact, I can have this turned off uh, and then show you this color enhancer, which is specifically dealing with those rocks. All right, the rocks in the background, very, very important. Uh, they were dull. I wanted them to pop. I wanted the color to really shine on those rocks. So I went ahead and threw a color enhancer there. Then I said, hey, you know what? Those need to be brighter. So I threw a tone enhancer. Now, you can't see the tone enhancers effect as much right now, and that's specifically because I don't have the vignette on and the sun is just overpowering, uh, and I noticed that, so uh, I had to do something about that. Now, the bleach bypass, this, uh, you know, I could probably go without. Uh, it was really just something that I threw in there to play around, and I like what it, I, I like it, enough that uh, it didn't really bother me. So I left it. All right. Now, the uh, vignette, this is where I wanted to focus in the, the viewer's attention on the salt mine, or I'm sorry, the paint mines. Uh, the way that I do that is by throwing a vignette into there. And then the next thing that I did was I had to deal with the sun. So I went ahead and put a adjustment over the top to lower the exposure. And that's what helped with the sun uh, getting a little bit better. Uh, and I did bring this adjustment down quite a bit here. And you can see it came down here. But if I hit O, I painted over this portion with the mask. So that way it wasn't going into my actual rocks there. So uh, that is the full edit there. Now I am going to have a, 
uh, link to all of the photos that I took uh, and made edits to so that way you can see them if you're interested. And if you want to know more about the philosophy behind me photographing and, and what I think when I'm taking pictures, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to help uh, looking at some avenues of, of either a podcast or maybe even vlogging on this particular channel and sharing that information with you guys if that's something you're interested in. Um, because it's important to know how to use the camera so when you get back to the editing room or your office or into the computer you know what you're doing so uh, again if you found value in today's video please smash the like button if you're new here my name is chris welcome to free will photos i would love it if you would consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already and when you do check that icon for the bell so you can get notified and all that good stuff um, i do post videos fairly regularly um, and I really just enjoy hanging out with the community here. I do live streams, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, if you are looking to get some free presets for On One Photo Raw, check the description box below. I have an email list just for signing up. You get free presets. And I do have some presets that I'm working on that I want to get out uh, for troubleshooting and you know, just get feedback from you all. So the way that you get onto that list of me emailing and selecting people to test out the presets uh, is to go to the description box below and click on the newsletter or the email list and then sign up. It's completely for free. You get some free presets for doing it. And then when I get ready to send out these presets for testing, I will email people on that list. And then uh, based off of the number of people that respond, I'll go ahead and get it back, uh, get you guys a link to download the presets that I'm working on. So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.